This morning on World News Now, breaking news, the giant explosion and fire at a northern Texas fertilizer plant. The blast was so intense it could be felt miles away. The victims, the mayhem, the heartbreak, and now the search for answers. It's Thursday, April 18th. From ABC News, this is World News Now with John Muller and Diana Perez. Morning, everybody. In a week of so much news, we have a truly disastrous situation unfolding this morning. That's right. And we want to begin this half hour with that breaking news from Texas. It is a fatal explosion that happened at a fertilizer plant. This is the kind of news that nobody wants to hear, especially those who live so close. There is a lot of news to get to this morning. Massive about evacuations, this. massive amounts of injuries, fatalities confirmed. This happened about eight o'clock last night. This place sent a wave of destruction across the small Texas town of West. Again, at least 100 people injured. The explosion at the fertilizer plant sent flames leaping into the night sky in West Texas, just 19 miles north of Waco. There are reports of numerous deaths and injuries. Dozens of emergency crews responded to the blast. Roads leading to the fire were jammed with emergency vehicles. 10 buildings were reported to be on fire, including a school across the street from the plant. Officials set up a triage center on the football field at a school to treat the injured until they could be transported to area hospitals. But the concern about possible chemicals forced officials to evacuate the area and they are gathering at another school nearby. The explosion could be heard and felt for miles and knocked out power to many. The plant explosion comes just days before the 20th anniversary of the fire that ended a 51 day siege at the Branch Davidian compound at Waco on April 19th. 1993. And this story evolving this morning right now concerns about ammonia uh, fumes in the air. Half the town of West already evacuated. More winds coming through this morning that could force the entire town mm -hmm. to be evacuated. It is a small town, a nursing home, apartment complexes, up to 50 homes, mm -hmm. potentially heavily, heavily damaged. That's right. The numbers could be staggering when this adds up. And we're going to get a press conference later in the morning to give us some of these hard numbers. But mm -hmm. right now, a really uh, explosive situation. And we actually want to get to uh, Jim Ryan, who has been on the scene for quite some time. He told us that he is about two miles away from it. He is right now joining us. He hasn't been able to get very much closer to that, but he tells us he does. Um, he's been able to see the fumes. He's been able to smell the fumes. Jim, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, it, it was primarily the smoke that was coming from the building that uh, that I think people were sensing around the community. It just it smelled like a, a house fire, any any building fire. Uh, hazmat crews have been out, hazardous materials experts with monitoring equipment to uh, test the air for any any trace of the sort of uh, anhydrous ammonia that might have come from that plant. So far, they haven't really been able to detect any outside the plant. That's good news. But there are still tanks inside the facility. And inside that factory, the fire is still burning. Firefighters have not yet been able to get inside there. So that is still a concern, a concern about another explosion, perhaps, or of a leak of some sort of ammonia. Right. There is a second tank of fertilizer, we are told, inside that plant. We're also told, like, as you mentioned, that the, the fire itself right now, while burning, is considered under control. But there is a very real concern that there could be another one of these massive explosions of a fertilizer tank, the one that remains uh, still intact. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah, and that, that's what uh, the reason is for the evacuation that's going to last throughout the night. Uh, several square blocks around the area have been evacuated. Essentially, a large percentage of the community has packed up and gone away. I watched as people loaded up into the backs of pickup trucks, a dozen or so, just to get away from the scene. Now, Jim, we're seeing some video here of what seems to be extensive damage to some of the areas around the plant. And, you know, a lot of the people haven't been able to get up close to the plant, so we can only imagine that this is blocks and blocks away from the actual blast. Can you tell us some of the things that you've seen? Well, I've seen buildings that had their windows shattered out, and they were some distance away from the, uh, the factory. Uh, across the freeway, in fact, some folks who live um, in a residential neighborhood said that uh, their windows were all blown out. So that the damage area is quite wide, even well away from the, the factory itself. Uh, we know now that this, uh, this explosion actually monitored on Richter scales as a small earthquake. 
That's yeah, right, apparently 2.1 on mm -hmm. the Richter scale, according to uh, U.S. government efforts. Talk about the firefighters. Now, we know that West Texas, a small town, is made up of volunteer firefighters. They've been working all night, and clearly they are one of the biggest concerns because they were in there fighting the blaze initially, and then that massive explosion. Now, we know that there are fatalities. We don't have a number attached to that. But the big concern, of course, is for the firefighters who were right there when that huge explosion, as you mentioned, a, a Richter scale earthquake-type explosion that was felt 50 miles away took place. Are you seeing more firefighters from other surrounding towns and the state of Texas coming into the area to help at this point? Yeah, absolutely. The freeway was jammed, in fact, in both directions. Interstate 35 from down south to Waco and north for Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, emergency crews rushing into the area. Among the volunteer firefighters in the town of West is the mayor of West. Uh, he was responding to the fire at the factory. It uh, was about two blocks away, he said, when suddenly the ground shook. He said his hat was blown off. The rearview mirror on his pickup truck was knocked off. Uh, it, it was an extremely intense explosion. He says he is concerned for the firefighters who have not yet been accounted for inside that building. That mayor, who's a firefighter, by the way, they wear double hats there. Uh, he's both. He described the, the, the cloud, the mushroom cloud. He said it looked like a nuclear bomb went off. He said it just rose into the sky and was a massive, massive cloud. So, yeah, I mean, people wearing double hats right now fighting fires, they're also, they're also the mayor. This is the kind of town we're talking about. Real close-knit community. And now, Jim, we know that this is a small community, 2,800 people, and we're hearing at least 200 of them have been injured in this blast. Have you been able to talk to any, any of the eyewitnesses who saw things, who have people who know people who may have been hurt, headed to the hospital, things like that? Well, I, I spoke with a woman who was actually inside the nursing home. She works there. They knew about the fire. They knew about the possibility for fumes coming from across the street. Just as he, she was starting to push a patient or a resident of the nursing home uh, through the dining room in a wheelchair, uh, the explosion struck. The building essentially collapsed. The woman suffered cuts and bruises and uh, was concerned about internal injuries as well. She rushed to a, a friend and was taken to the hospital by a pickup truck. Uh, meanwhile, ambulances were, were uh, gathering up over at the football field where triage operations were underway. Now, we know that it's between 50 and 75 structures that were damaged. Among them, we have a middle school, we have a nursing home, and we have an apartment complex. And there are reports that the roof of that apartment complex may have collapsed at this point. So there's no telling how many people have been injured and perhaps killed. Are you hearing what the efforts are going to be overnight to make sure that everybody is safe? Well, it's just a matter of getting as many people as possible out into those neighborhoods, uh, firefighters and uh, state troopers and police, uh, folks to go in and do a house-by-house house search. That's what the Department of Public Safety is uh, looking at right now, is uh, going through each structure, trying to find if anybody is inside there, and, and then uh, move on to the next one. Uh, that apartment complex, we understand that, uh, at least early on, it was on fire. The lower floors were. People were trapped on the upper floors, and firefighters were trying to get in to rescue those people. All right, Jim Ryan, uh, thank you very much uh, reporting uh, there in West Texas. We also want to go to ABC's Steve Ososami right now, who is in West Texas as well. Steve, can you hear us? I sure can. Set the scene. Where are you? What are you seeing? We just left that triage center near that football field that the previous guest just talked about, and there were probably a dozen ambulances that were outside the triage center. There was no one inside who was being treated when we got there. We're told that the serious, most serious injuries have been airlifted to area hospitals. Uh, what they're doing right now is search and rescue, and they kicked us out of there. They wanted us out of there fast because in the event that they found anyone alive or injured, uh, they wanted to bring them back to that triage center and then airlift them to the hospitals as needed. I can tell you that we ran into firefighters from all across the state who have been called on to this. Um, one firefighter told us that he thought there were as many as 500 different units here. There are volunteers, people in the neighborhood who've come uh, to, to help out here. We talked with a few residents. Uh, who lived a few miles away from the plant, who said that, that it, it felt like an earthquake. Uh, we talked with a little girl who said it felt like a big rock uh, hit her town. Um, many people who were home at the time say it was, it was very, very frightening, the sound and the feel that, that, that they all felt as the ground shook from this explosion. Firefighters here were very concerned about uh, a tank that was filled with some sort of ammonia, and so because of that, they've kept everyone uh, very far back, miles, miles away, 
from this from the center of activity here. Firefighters who we talked with who were uh, just at the fire tell us it is still burning, even though it is under control, and that it could still be burning for another day at least. And so now, Steve, we were able to talk to a woman, uh, one of our producers was able to talk to a woman who said that she was running toward the scene and she saw people being wheeled out of this nursing home. And many of them were bandaged, but many more were not bandaged, bleeding profusely from many areas. And, and the worry is that people are still trying to help those who are in need, but there's a problem with the air quality, or at least that's what some people believe. Have you, are you being kept away because of the air quality? Are you being kept away because of this fear that this other tank may blow? Or is it that they're trying to get help to people and they want to keep all the ancillary people out of the way well you know we we're not quite sure what's happening with that nursing home i can tell you that we are about two to three miles away and the air quality from what i can see and smell with on my own appears appears fine um so i'm not sure you know uh, what the air quality issues are here um, we haven't gotten uh, many reports in terms of, you know, the conditions of the people in that nursing home or in the apartment building that was also across the street from the plant that we're told also suffered serious damage. But I can tell you that they're going through both, both buildings right now um, looking to see if there's anyone who might be trapped inside them. All right, Steve Osinsami, we will come back to you. Thank you very much for that reporting uh, in West Texas. We want to go to Brent Esrock, the CEO, we believe, of a health care facility there near uh, the blast site. Uh, Brent, are you there? I am. Tell us uh, the name of your uh, organization and, and where you're at right now. We're, we're at uh, Providence Health Center in Waco, Texas. Can you explain to us how many people you've seen, how many people have been arriving, and in what conditions? Sure. We so far tonight, we've seen 62 patients, uh, one of which came in in critical condition. The rest of them uh, we treated are still treating for minor or moderate injuries, uh, ranging anywhere from cuts and abrasions, uh, some with broken bones, many suffering from respiratory distress, uh, obviously from chemical inhalation. And so uh, thankfully, many of them just, uh, as I said, minor to moderate. When you say chemical inhalation, can you explain what this chemical, uh, the ammonia that's used for this fertilizer, can do to people's lungs, to their tissue, to their eyes? I'm probably not uh, in a position to do that myself. Uh, I really don't know the chemical makeup of that, but uh, you can tell from the condition they're in, they're, they, are, they are having some, some issues, and, and that's why we had so many people from our respiratory therapy department in to, to really deal with those issues, and they've done a marvelous job tonight. In fact, the, the doctors and nurses and staff from all over Providence Health Center have done outstanding work uh, for our friends up north. Brett, the people you're treating right now at Providence Health Center the people you're mentoring, mentioning with lacerations, cuts, the, the minor type injuries, besides the one critical that you mentioned, are these people who were in the town a mile away, are you treating anyone there that was actually working on the fire before the blast? At this point, we don't have any emergency personnel uh, at the hospital, no one from EMS or the fire department or police. Uh, these are all just residents of the, uh, the area. All right, Brett Esrock, thank you so very much for joining us, and good luck to you and everyone on your team. This, uh, this is going to be a long morning for you, as, as we can only imagine.